What's up guys, Omni here. You guys know how it goes, another day, another video. Last night I tweeted I sleep. What recent news, topics, tweets, videos y'all want me to talk about tomorrow? Guys, there's a serial woman puncher wreaking havoc in New York City right now. The Diddy FBI raids is now exposing the entirety of Hollywood. Probably Hassan might be having a breakdown about having lower views on Twitch. And Marvel just released a game that people are calling the Overwatch killer. All of that and more. And yes, this is Andy right here. He's sleeping. He actually shoves his head into my arm and then that's it. I don't have an arm anymore so I'm going to try to record today's video with Indy sleeping in my arm okay <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> He's such a baby. This is for all you guys out there who said they want some indie, okay? You gotta drop a like now. Here's Sleepy Indy. All right, let's start off with this one, okay? Apparently there is a serial puncher going around punching innocent women in New York. What in the hell? We just got finished talking about a crazy story about these New York City squatters that are basically going to other people's houses and then getting them arrested <laughs> for trying to get their property back. Now you tell me, what is going, I knew New York City is wild, but now we got a serial puncher what do you mean by that i just realized i was part of a group of women that got punched what but like i just texted my friend and she told me you have to make a video about this because apparently a ton of women are getting attacked um it's like so bad it, you like can't see what direction like you don't know where you are so i was looking down at my phone trying to figure out what direction was like the water bottle store so i'm looking at my phone like this trying to like figure out what direction i should go when i hear someone go excuse me and i just sidestepped to the furthest side of the sidewalk i could go because in my head i was like oh maybe i'm in the way but also like i don't want to talk to no one and as i turn to look i see this man with his fist up ready to swing and i'm like what the frick so instantly i went like this and he hit me square in the arm because I think he was trying to hit me in the face. What the heck? So someone basically tapped her on the shoulder, said, hey, yo, what's up? You imagine someone tapping you on the shoulder saying, hey, excuse me. And you look over, yeah, what's up? Well, I'm sorry, let me get out your way. And then bam, straight to the face. Like, what the hell? So I just got punched in the face walking home. I was literally like leaving class. I turned the corner and I was looking down and I was looking at my phone and like texting. And then out of nowhere, this man just came up and hit me in the face. I'm like actually in shock right now. I'm just like walking home because- but She has a bruise. She quite literally has a bruise of her Bro, where is Batman? Okay, th this is a, a vigilante going around here. Serial woman face puncher. And what's the description? I guess no one's like seeing it because he's punching you and getting out the way. Is, is no one seeing like what this guy looks like? You guys, I was literally just walking and a man came up and punched me in the face. Oh my God, it hurts so bad. I can't even talk. Literally, I fell to the ground and now this giant goose egg is forming and I'm like, oh my God, it looks so Oh my God, she has a huge lump. This is insane, okay. All right, we gotta get this guy. This guy is cooked. Who Who is doing this? So guys, I looked into it. I'm doing research, trying to figure out what's going on. There's multiple stories. There's multiple descriptions. Some people saying it's a black guy. Someone saying it's a Korean guy. Some people are saying that it's multiple people punching multiple women. Like it's a TikTok trend where it's not just one guy, but just multiple men. But like, oh yeah, let's go on a trend where we just punch women in the face in New York City? What in the ham fat? I'm hoping that this situation is just one guy who just needs to be put behind bars and that's it, okay? If there's ever a trend of just multiple guys punching multiple women from different parts around the world, bro, bro, no, 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 no. Don't even, this better not turn into any type of situation like that. But guys, pause really quickly, okay? I have some amazing news that I really wanna share with you guys. I'm excited to announce that as of today, Pulse Kern has officially joined the Omni team and has become an official partner of the channel. What do you mean by that? In case you guys didn't know. Paul's Kern is a company that creates high quality accessories by using natural products from the earth, including grain, marbling, wood, stone, mother of pearl, and more. The OmniX Hall's Kern simply means that I'll be able to showcase to you guys all of Hall's Kern's latest and greatest accessories that they'll be releasing periodically throughout the year. Speaking of which, guys, Mother's Day and Father's Day is literally right around the corner. If you're looking for a special gift that'll remind your parents how much you love them, look no further. Or say screw them and just treat yourself instead. Spring is here, the weather is getting 
getting better, you're going to be outside touching grass. You might as well look fresh while you're doing so. You guys at home already know that I love Hall's Kern, okay? I like accessories and statement pieces that really reflect my personality in return for looking sharp. I get satisfaction of knowing my investment gives back to nature since they partner with institutions like the Jane Goodall Institute, where they support reforestation projects and other things that have environmental protection or social support in mind. So yeah, guys, what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description below or use the QR code that you guys see on the screen and use code Omni to get 15% off your order. You guys will be supporting my channel, the planet, and acquiring some really good drip all at once. Free shipping to USA and most EU countries within two to four days, a 24th month warranty, and a 24-day right of return. And again, special thanks to Halskern for officially joining the Omni team and sponsoring today's video. Guys, okay, this is absolutely huge. We have to talk about Diddy, aka the Diddler. <laughs> That's what the internet is calling him as the ultimate villain, as there was news reports with the FBI, Homeland Security, came in and raided all of his homes. He has an LA property, I think he has one in New York City, he has one I think in Miami, and they came in to find some evidence that they probably already is known about potentially Diddy involved in trafficking, which I feels like a lot of people have already known. If you guys don't know, over the past couple of weeks or months, there have been a lot of people who've been coming out with lawsuits that Diddy has just been settling for millions and millions of dollars, claiming that they were victims and these situations where he would be using them sexually. Usually all of these situations involved with them being coerced or forced because as you guys can see here, <laughs> hidden cameras were found in every room of Diddy's homes and possessed footage of every person who attended the freak out party and house party. So Diddy essentially recorded everything that happened at his crazy parties and then just had ransom, just had blackmail. If you came to a Diddy party and he got you to do anything, you're cooked. You're gone. <laughs> Apparently Kanye was calling him the Fed as well because this is just basically blackmail that he holds over every single person potentially in Hollywood. This is absolutely massive because if this documentation gets exposed through discovery or any other means this could expose a lot more people they're even claiming that jay-z is somehow involved in this as well i'll tell you guys more about it 50 cents is over here releasing a documentary his own freaking documentary about diddy i think it's called did he do it did he do it <laughs> 50 Cent has been in the background laughing because he feels like he's known about this for a long time. He's been he's been basically saying it out loud that this is what's been happening. But now it's actually finally hitting to the point where the cops and the FBI are coming in and closing in on Diddy. And we might have another situation that kind of looks like R. Kelly is his freak out parties in attendance were celebrities, politicians, athletes, international dignitaries like British royalty, Prince Harry and music label executives. Lil Ron claims some of the biggest names in the recording industry sponsored these parties with sex workers, drugs, and underage girls. The CEO of Universal Music, Lucian Grange, is named as a defendant. So is the former CEO of Motown Records, Ethiopia, Habert Merriam, and others. Oh my, guys, this, holy crap. If I am Diddy, I am worried that if I get taken to custody, I'm going to get Epstein. This is, this is, I, I would, if I am Diddy, I am afraid that if I get taken to custody, I will get killed. And then people will be like, Diddy killed himself. Oh my Lord. If there was not a moment for someone to, if they silenced that Boeing guy, the guy, the whistleblower, oh, oh my, no way. There's no, if they get rid of Diddy, there is so much that we don't know what's going on. We'll keep watching this, but guys, there are reports that Diddy's plane, his private jets were actually seen flying cross country to the Caribbeans or other places where he can't be extradited. And people thought that Diddy was basically fleeing the country. But now another conspiracy theory here is that that was Diddy actually transporting illegal stuff, documentation, so the FBI can't go and get it. He's moving his drugs or he's moving his, his blackmail or whatever. There's some people who believe that Diddy was already working working with the FBI and combination with these two, they were kind of like keeping everybody in checks and balance and stuff. I don't know. There's so many 
conspiracy theories. So much is going to come out from it. And then so much misinformation that even when we get the truth might not actually be the truth. But this is absolutely huge because it's going to open up another super huge hole in what's happening in the private sectors of Hollywood. Diddy being one of the main sources of people who collected all of this dirt on everybody everywhere. And if you was at one of those parties, just like at Epstein and used on that island, you are about to get got. Lil Rod says hidden cameras were in every room of Diddy's homes. Lil Rod believes that Mr. Combs possesses compromising footage of every person that has attended his freak-off parties and his house parties. Salacious tapes of Hollywood's biggest names, including record CEOs and politicians doing drugs and cavorting with prostitutes and minors. The complaint argues that these freak-off parties were a business model. Young and up-and-coming talent attended and were promised career opportunities and access to music executives. They were then plied with drugs and alcohol, filmed. Some were blackmailed. There was a quid pro quo, according to the complaint. Lil Rod said not only were these music executives sponsoring these parties, they were handing Diddy large sums of cash that he used to pay for the sex workers and drugs. Something tells me the IRS is going to be interested. <laughs> oh my God. It was a, it's all a part of the system, bro. You think about it, this all actually kind of makes perfect sense, right? Hollywood is a place where you have to sell your soul in some kind of way, okay? You want to basically get lots and lots and lots of money, right? You want to get these opportunities. Well, come to P. Diddy's party, do some crazy stuff, and then let them have leverage over you. And then you're just a mule. You're a Hollywood mule. You are now under their fingers. If you make money, you got to do what they tell you to do because they got freaking blackmail tapes of you doing terrible things. There are innocent parties involved, like young people and minors, okay, that are being coerced into this and being pushed into it and being blackmailed at a young age. And then you have perpetrators like Diddy or the CEOs, these most powerful people who are on the other side of the coin who are coming in here and, and creating this system and this ecosystem and are profiting off of it. It's absolutely massive. Meanwhile, remember I told you about that documentary, okay? 50 Cent has always been on Instagram, making comments, kind of poking fun, been on podcasts, being like, yeah, bro, I seen this coming a while ago. Even Cat Williams was in an interview recently, a couple months back with Shannon Sharp, talking about how crazy these Diddy parties. If Diddy tells you to come over and party, you don't go over there and party. <laughs> Everyone's been kind of spilling the secrets and opening up and saying that something big is coming in 2024, and we're here. This guy said, hold up, 50 Cent has been working on Diddy documentary this whole time and he just announced it he's literally making a documentary exposing all of the secrets he knows right now uh the things that cat are starting to say make a lot of sense he knew 24 is the year all eyes will be exposed and this is a tweet from 50 cent okay a decent the rapper <laughs> so this is going to break records when this drops glg you know the vibes gun it brands.com it says diddy do it which is so <laughs> That's so corny, but also perfect as well. Did he do it? Original docu series coming soon. I don't know if he's trying to, you know, pitch it to like Netflix or somewhere. But this is becoming a surviving R. Kelly kind of situation. Now it's turned into a surviving Diddy. Who are they going to be talking about? Meek Mill. There's going to be so many. This is going to be so huge, guys. Question is, who's next? Right now that Diddy is getting got. Right, he hasn't officially been reprimanded or arrested yet. Hasn't been shown. I'll show you some footages that they have. Basically, TMZ got some footage of basically what the raid looks like and actual Diddy pacing back and forth. But so far, no official arrest that we know of. But people believe like someone is going to get exposed next and that person is going to be Jay-Z. It's 2020, y'all. Yeah. And it's different than when it was 2016. You know, the game has been elevated. Um, 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 as we can tell, there's, there's no expense being spared. We had a black billionaire's lunch. And this is Diddy pacing back and forth. This is the first footage of us seeing Diddy ever since basically the FBI raided his house. We do not know what the last footage is. There's some pictures out there that show him actually talking with some of the Homeland Security agents. So we don't know if that's actually true or not, but that's so far, this is the furthest that we've gotten. Man in the blue sweatpants. Yep, that definitely looks like Diddy. Damn, somebody just recording from the side. I guess you wonder what's going to happen next, Diddy. And then, yeah, what's next? Oh, we got commentary. Damn. Just outside in the public pacing. 
I would have had a mask on or something. I would have been out there like Kanye. Yeah, that's it. Man's got to evaluate his entire life because that everything around him is crumbling. So guys, that's the Diddy situation in a nutshell. Everyone's calling him the Diller. Everyone's having fun. The internet's having a blast, but man, the implications of this man getting arrested, going to trial, open for discovery, what's going to happen? The dirt that he knows could be absolutely freaking massive. I'll let you guys know as anything else happens with the situation, what are the cover-ups? What are the implications? Who's getting got in the process? <laughs> I'll keep you guys posted, but this entire situation is wild. This one really sucks. You guys asked me to talk about this, man. Said Ninja has unfortunately been diagnosed with cancer, bro. We just, oh, God damn, we just heard about the Princess of Wales being diagnosed with cancer. And now that it's just, obviously, I hate cancer. Ninja revealed that the doctors found melanoma cancer on his foot, but he likely caught it in the early stages. Ninja had tweeted, all right, I'm still a bit of shock, but want to keep you all updated. A few weeks ago, I went to a dermatologist for an annual skin slash mold check that Jazz proactively scheduled for me. There was a mole on the bottom of my foot that they wanted to remove just to be careful. It came back as melanoma, but they are optimistic they caught it in the early stages. I had another dark spot appear near it. So today they biopsied it that and removed a larger area around the melanoma with the hopes that under the microscope, they will see clear non melanoma edges and we will know we got it i'm grateful to have hope in finding this early but please take this psa to get skin check ups god bro there <laughs> cancer is just man oh man where is the freaking cure i'm just kind of just being frustrated because i've lost people to cancer in the most recent times and we see people just passing left and right from this stupid terrible terrible freaking disease. I'm just like, okay, what type of checkups do we need? We got to go see a dermatologist. We need to go get some scans. We need to go get some x-rays. We need to go a colonoscopy. We got to do like 50 million things just to make sure that we're not checked up. I mean, it, it makes sense because this disease just takes people. And so you want to get ahead of it. So yeah, guys, this is just a PSA for you guys as well. If you feel like something is weird, trust your gut get that stuff checked out it could be the difference between your life ending in a few years and you living for 10 20 30 more decades if at the, the extent of your full life okay it's i know it's kind of scary to go to the doctors and go to the hospital to find out some bad news but if it also means you get to live your full lifespan because you caught something early you get you, oh my god man be careful out there guys definitely get checked out tell your family to get checked out just be as preemptive as possible all right guys so we got some hasanabi news my guy hasan okay the political commentary space the biggest twitch streamer that does politics man and you guys asked me to talk about this one really fast i, I don't know why whenever it comes to like hasan or destiny and we have to talk about news when it surrounds them to me i'm always just like in a good mood because i'm just like what do they do now or what do they say now what the the, the information around them i don't want to be in their space i would never want to be in their position because it's just a wild place to be yeah i guess you're a millionaire but like the energy that surrounds them is just wild so me looking on the outside being like all right what's happening with these cats that are like wrestling in the mud okay what did they do <laughs> but you said hassan is having a mental breakdown in his discord over his declining viewership oh no 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 i'm gonna just call it right now this is probably just trolling or cat there's no way i Hassan is fine. This guy is a super mega millionaire, okay? I don't think he cares about decline and viewership because people are going outside and touching grass now that it's about to be April. Okay? I don't think this is a thing, but just in case it is, let's, what did he say? Tweet, he said, I'm so sad. I think the streams are bangers, but people just don't see them. Uh, we used to be a community. I hate what my community is becoming. I swear Twitch streaming isn't about the actual content. It's about whether people want to pay attention to you or not and clout. All that shit was a banger and 13k watched like I'm effing gaming at 8 p.m. Dang, my man's complaining about those 13,000 views. He's a 13,000 view Andy. That fall off. <laughs> I'm being facetious because 13,000 views is still huge, but I'm sure he's used to his 30, 40, 50,000 views, which I'm sure will return. It's just one of those things. I think there's always ups and downs sometimes in viewerships, but it's crazy, right? Where you're just like, man, I, I can't believe it. I've only got 13,000 views towards the normal 40,000, 50,000 that I'm used to. And he said, I'm done. I hate this job. I'm not streaming today. And then he said, I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> 
all right, this is content. There's there's no way that this is a content. If anybody takes this seriously, I I there's there's no way that Hassan is over here crying. You guys know that meme where Woody Harrelson is crying with the the, the hundred dollars of bills. There's there's no way. This is. A <laughs> It's a psyop. But people are preying on his downfall, bro. Bro thinks solidly watching YouTube videos for six hours while somehow eating chicken and rice the entire time is banger content. <laughs> Hassan always seems to blame everyone but himself. Good. Couldn't happen to a more deserving person. It's an election year, so he'll probably be alright, but the fact is he's incapable of taking a step back and realizing how his viewership is still high, how he's set for life, how he had a solid run, yada yada yada. This is I again I see the matrix, and this has to be content. If, if if my brain is telling me what's occurring here, okay, this is specifically content so people can start talking about Hassan here because otherwise there'd be no point in me making this video. You see how the world turns and turns? It's a news cycle and I profit from it as well because I get to, you know, put him in a thumbnail. I'll probably find a nice picture of Hassan, put him in a thumbnail, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I, again, I, maybe he is having a rough time. Maybe he is depressed. I, I don't think he is. I would not assume that he is, but maybe he is struggling. He has so many haters, right? It's, it's, it's huge. And there's a huge discussion about like Hassan's decline, the fall. Like someone's about to come up here and make the documentary, the rise and fall of Hassan Piker while he still like is up, right? <laughs> like Hassan falling is still peaks that people will never reach in their entire lifetime. And it's so temporary because we're comparing the, the month of February from the, the the month of March like that's the, that's the dip that we're looking at there's no way this is true right this is election freaking year as we get closer and closer to the election this man's going to get more and more and more views and more exposure it's just going to increase steadily he's not at the levels of like Kai Sinet who's like currently streaming right now he has like uh the singer by the name of Tyla he's he's got everything he's always he was a Nigeria Kai is like over I think 100,000 subscribers he's still absolutely killing it. I think he's at the top of the game right now. But yeah, this tweet said Hassan Piker's viewership dropping off down 40%. <laughs> Why do you put percent like that? I used to like him when he was a standard Bernie guy, but then he decided to go full tanky. He laughed about China invading Taiwan, defended October 7 massacre. He's been evil maxing. I don't I don't know what that term is. I suspect this is why so many people just tuned out. And what are the stats? What do we got here? What's, what's this downfall here? In February, he had 49,000 subscribers. In March, he has 27 thousand subscribers the, the tier ones seem to be exactly the same so the people who were basically subscribed to him kind of stay the same the primes are down just by a thousand the tier two and the tier threes are this wait a minute the undefined what is undefined he got thirty thousand subscribers that were undefined and nine thousand that weren't that's the gap. I don't know what the hell that is, but in terms of gifted subs, they seem to be the same. I don't know what this number is. Undefined, but they're count towards the subscriber total. Reference, guys. Okay, 50,000 subscribers times $5 is how much it costs to do a subscription. That's $250,000 a month. And then it gets split. A portion of it goes Twitch. He gets a better cut from it, most likely, but let's just call it like half and half. He's getting at least 125K revenue and just subscriptions alone. That does count his ad revenue that doesn't count his sponsors it doesn't count his contracts it doesn't count his pocket <laughs> this man is laughing to the bank money is not an issue and i don't think viewership or decline is actually an issue i feel like this might be a non-issue I, I don't know maybe i need to see how he's actually feeling but i i think that this is he's fine i'll let you guys know if anything comes from it here is my prediction okay because i'm always right I'm, my name is omni right i'm omnipresent omnipotent i know these things before it happens okay what's today wednesday he's gonna come out with a stream hey guys stream is live the downfall of me <laughs> <laughs> he's going to make content off the fact that people are making content off of him and who is downfall and then he's going to make content on it and then he's going to get more viewers and it's just going to be a cycle. The song's going to be just fine as the election year continues to pick up and pick up. People are going to just basically, it's two people right now, all the Zoomers and the Gen Zers that they flock to. It's him and Destiny, right? They're just going to flock to them for these things because they like debating and they like covering all these stories. Those are the two big ones in terms of the Twitch space and the YouTube space. So he's it's 
he's going to be fine. There's there's nothing here. This sounds like a nothing burger, but yo, if he's actually stressed out and he's worried and he does come out with some of that, I'll let you know if there's any updates, but I think Guy is just chilling, laughing at the fact that the people think that he's actually having a breakdown, which I'm sure he's not. But if he's truly thinking about killing himself and it's not a joke, which I think it's absolutely a joke because I don't think Hassan is the type of person to vocalize to his audience those type of mental health situations. I think he's a little bit more pragmatic than that and smarter than that and has a little bit more self-control than that. But if he is in a tough, rough situation mentally, then I hope that he gets out of that bubble because, yeah, I don't want anybody being a kind of dark place like that. But guys, we got to talk about this one briefly. This one happened right in my own backyard in the DMV, Baltimore. There was an entire bridge, the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed around 1 a.m. the day before yesterday. It is 1.6 miles long and it broke after a cargo ship essentially crashed into it and it collapsed with cars and people who were on the bridge as well. You guys have probably already seen the footage because it's absolutely kind of terrifying. Just look at it, but in case you missed it, here it is right here. Oh my God. That is insane. Okay, guys, like I, I have crossed that bridge so many freaking times in my life being a DMV resident, seeing a place where I've crossed about and in my head and my brain, whenever I go to the bridges, I'm always thinking to myself, man, this would be crazy if something crazy happened. You know, those, those intrusive thoughts kick in, man, I'm on this bridge. What if I just drove off the bridge or something like that? And then to see something like this happen as an accident is absolutely freaking terrifying. And the implications of this bridge crashing are, are they're twofold. Number one, the people who were involved, from what I understand, there were at least 10 casualties. They were able to save at least two to three people, but then there are about seven, six to seven people who have not been discovered and people have now given up on the rescue and believe that they are dead. This then turned into a racist situation. <laughs> Because that's how world works, right? Whenever anything happens, okay, anyone's farts, coughs, or whatever, someone says, ah, racism. Let's let's figure out how we can make this about black versus white people. Let's figure out how we can make this about race, or let's figure out how we can make it about politics. And this guy, the freaking mayor of Baltimore, came out here and spoke in this 19 second clip, which then started baiting a bunch of people, being like, yo, this is your mayor of Baltimore? Who is this guy? Why is he in a normal jacket? Why does he look like this? Why does he look so young? Why? Just making these questions because he's not the typical like old white guy with a belly being like hello everybody you know this he's not he doesn't fit the description that a lot of people feel and a mayor and yeah you know what happens with that narratives get created and spun and people who actually feel like not good about black people start turning it about racism. They usually do it in a soft way. It's passive aggressive racism. There's a lot of it on Twitter now. It's like, for whatever reason instead of calling people the n-word right <laughs> Now they're just like, hmm, a situation that involves a black person. Hmm, I wonder what you guys will imply about that. That's that's how they're getting around actually just being straight out racist now. Uh, everyone, this is a unthinkable a tragedy. Uh, we have to uh, first and foremost pray for all of those who are impacted, uh, those families. I uh, pray for our first responders and thank them. Uh, all of them working together, uh, city, state, local, to make sure that... Yeah, that's the 19 second clip. If I play more for it, I'll get copyright strike by CBS. But uh, yeah, he's just out here in the jacket. It's probably like 2, 3, 4 a.m. in the morning. Apparently the cargo ship in itself did do like a mayday, mayday type thing. So they were actually able to get the people to come here to rescue them as soon as possible. The responders were really fast. The system in place that they put, this wasn't some kind of like crazy situation where there was like terrorists or something going on, right? Like people are coming up with these conspiracies theories but it looks like it got handled properly but it's still tragic that it happened in the first place what is dei by the way i keep seeing dei everywhere i feel like it's the new word for like just saying the n-word <laughs> everywhere i go on twitter if i see somebody that's black they're like dei what, what is dei diversity equity and inclusion ah i see the evil that is dei <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Okay, I got it. I got it. What is DEI and why is it dividing America? Okay, I feel like we're going into another subject here, but I'm just a little curious now. The TLDR is since 2023, 81 anti-DEI bills that target programs at colleges have been introduced in 28 states and in Congress. According to the tally by the Chronicle of Higher Education, eight have been signed into law in states like Texas and Florida. A 2023 survey by the Pew Research Center found that 52% of employed U.S. adults say they have DEI trainings or meetings at work, and 33 say that they have a designated staff member who promotes DEI. Recently, some companies have slashed teams dedicated to DEI, and wealthy corporate leaders such as Bill Ackman and Elon Musk have made posts on social media that decry diversity programs. Critics say DEI programs are discriminatory and attempt to solve racial discrimination by disadvantaging other groups particularly white Americans. But supporters and industry experts insist that decades-old practice has been politicized and is widely misunderstood. All right, I get it. I got it. You got one group of people who are saying, hey, we need some more diversity in the workforce because it's being run with like white men. They're just everywhere. <laughs> they, I, I went to freaking accounting, okay? I worked at a big four, okay? I was the only black person in a group of like 150 people, okay? So I know that the diversity thing needs to probably be in existence in some kind of way because it's oversaturated with just older white men. But then you have the, the extreme cases where you have that, that black woman, that CEO, or I forget what it was. She was like, I don't hire white people because they're dangerous <laughs> so you got like two extremes of the situation where one side is like hey we are trying to basically uplift you know minority groups and help them to have opportunities that they don't normally have and then you have other people who are like we are trying to crush the white people right so you got two sides and there's the two extremes right and and you have people who can see the nuance here in the circle in the bubble but then you got everybody else on the extremes like nah this is bad for me i'm white so this is bad and someone's i got it i got it now. i'm sure it gets more detailed than that and we don't need to go into it in this episode maybe we'll talk about it later but that's the general consensus that i'm understanding when it comes to dei anyway coming back to the bridge okay and the implications what does this mean for freaking baltimore okay there's a video here and it says here by colin rugg there were no vehicles traveling on the Francis Scott Key Bridge when it fell into the ocean, thanks to the heroic police officers who jumped into action. When I see this footage here, the only thing, which is, oh my God, I, the only thing that I can imagine is like during rush hour traffic, this could have been one of the most catastrophic events that we have seen in our lifetimes. If this took place at any other point in time, if this cargo ship did not leave at the time that it was at the middle of the night at 1 a.m. and this thing is as packed as it normally is, oh my God. God, like I just, it might have become one of the most horrific incidents that I've seen since like 9-11. That's how big, there's there's so much going on in the world right now that are these horrific, ridiculous, insane events. Like there's the whole thing that happened, the shooting that's happening in Moscow that I don't know what's going on with that. The only reason why I haven't been covering that is because it seems like when people cover the whole incident and the news story about Moscow, their videos get suppressed. If you guys don't know, I'll, be just, I'll sneak this in here really fast. Okay, I don't tell anybody, but there, yeah, there was a shooting that happened over there in Moscow. I think it was at a, a symphony or some kind of place and it was like at least 100 people confirmed dead and people are trying to figure out who was responsible, okay? There's apparently ISIS might have claimed that, that they were the ones that doing it, but people are wondering if this was an inside job. Was it Putin? Uh, was it Ukraine? Was it America? Like who did it and for what? And then people are just running with these narratives because obviously we're never going to get the truth of this situation. It's one of those things that we, I don't think, as the public will get the actual truth, but the people who are involved, the parties at play, will spin the narrative into whatever they feel like it needs to be in order to, you know, basically profit and maintain whatever order they feel is order. As of right now, there's no World War III, but there are talks and sayings that people are trying to blame it on America. They're trying to blame it on ISIS. They're trying to blame it on the CIA. They're trying to blame it on, on Islam. They're trying to blame it on Israel. I mean, they're trying to blame it on all of these things. And I, the information is so freaking whack these days, guys. I appreciate you guys watching me because I'm going to tell you like it is. I'm not going to kind of sugarcoat or try to spin it in a way so that you have specific points. I try to stay objective and give you my opinion. If you don't agree with it, that's totally fine. But like, I feel like information nowadays, watching these networks and these news sources that are out here that are paid and bought for, right? It becomes impossible to know the truth because we now see the veil. Now that we have information and TikTok and we see all of these things at play, we now recognize how much we've been lied to. 
over the time, right? <laughs> Look into this whole thing with P. Diddy and Hollywood and see things just break open. All this information that's being kept from us is now being exposed at such an alarming rate that now we know about this veil and we know that the lies are happening. The question is, is who is lying? We will never know the full truth, but we know that the full truth is never being spoken to us. In terms of the ramifications, the key bridge rebuild may take four years or even more, and you guys know this is gonna be even more, in order to repair. I just can't believe we're alive at a time where we just witnessed that. I 2024, 20, the years, I don't know, guys. But remember when I say, like, I feel like the world is getting more and crazy? I literally said it just a couple weeks ago. I thought, like, oh, the world, the world is getting more crazy. Things are happening, man. And it just, it keeps happening. This everything, all the news that we're talking about feels like it's always escalating. So we have to take a step back. I need to give you guys a palate cleanser. It's Chica's freaking birthday. <laughs> Markiplier posted, happy birthday, Chica. And this is Chica. If you guys don't know, this is uh, Markiplier's dog. This is our baby. We Ch Chica is essentially the, the entire world's dog. This is YouTube's biggest baby. You know how the White House has like the, the, you know, the president has a dog. We don't care about them. I don't even know who it is. But Chica, we all know about little baby, little Chica. How old is Chica? Chica has her own wiki page. <laughs> she is a celebrity though. Chica's Mark's youngest pet dog. She is a golden retriever and was brought in the home on November 19, 2015. So she is nine years old. Oh, look at the baby. That's my baby. That's my, that's our baby. Ah, this is, oh. You guys feel it? Do you feel the palate cleanser? Do you feel the good energy? You guys are first like, man, it's so tragic out in this world. It's so dark. It's so dark. And now I'm showing you Markiplier hugging Chica. And now suddenly you realize everything is going to be okay. Hope has been restored. I'm going to be putting more palate cleansers for you guys on this channel because we need to offset some of this crazy news. We can't be talking about these freaking kid touchers nonstop. Hey, I'm going to talk about this guy who touched the kid. Hey, I'm going to talk about this guy. No, no. I will talk about them, but I will also sprinkle it in with some stuff to keep your mental health up. And this, this right here, oh. Yeah, this is, this, I can feel the dopamine creeping in. Happy birthday, Chica. Where's Indy? Now I gotta give him a hug. He's sleeping on the couch. I'll go give him a hug another time. Another palate cleanser for you guys. Reggie just had a birthday. He just turned 63, I believe, yesterday. Happy birthday to Reggie, our guy. The gang gang, man, I feel like Nintendo hasn't been the same ever since we lost Reggie, bro. Ever since he stopped coming to the Nintendo Directs, a lot of the magic just disappeared, man. It's insane how much of an impact this guy had in the, the gaming space. Just seeing his smile and seeing his involvement when it came to the community was just so irreplaceable. I feel like he was one of the last figures that really connected, you know, us with a person, with that person representing said organization. Now we just, it feels like we lost something magical there, but... He is still around. Reggie's still out here doing his thing. Retired president and COO of Nintendo of America. And now he's just out there living his life, doing the side quest and just being a boss. That's it. That's all the time I have. I got to get back to playing Animal Crossing New Leaf on my Nintendo 3DS. People are talking about this. Apparently... <laughs> One of the biggest comebacks of all freaking time. Hello. And it has to do with Winnie the Pooh, the horror film, the sequel. And this one just went absolutely freaking viral as of yesterday. Okay. If you guys don't know, Winnie the Pooh became, what is it called? Free domain where basically anybody can use it. The IP is free. You can do whatever you want with it. And whenever it goes to the public space where basically that copyright is no longer in place, they usually make a horror film with it. And apparently the first one, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, got a 3% on the tomato meter, 3% with a 50% audience score. One of the worst reviews I've ever seen in my entire time. And then when it released yesterday, it had a 100% Rotten Tomatoes with 80% audience score. Hello, what in the world? This is only based off six reviews, right? But six reviews, 100%, they either got paid, something going on. There's no way, there's no way. Oh my freaking God. Are you kidding me? It has a 75%. It has a higher audience score. Everybody, this is really good. Guys, for a horror mystery thriller type movie, these are amazing scores. The, the tomato meter is now based off 12 reviews, but still really high. It's still fresh. And the audience score is based, it's, it's, it's even, people actually like this. This was actually one of the biggest comebacks I have ever seen. 
I, I ain't gonna watch this. I don't like scary films. I'm, I'm just, I don't got the blood for it. I don't, it's not in my DNA. You know, you, you, you can pay me to watch it, but there's just no way. One of the biggest comebacks of all time. That, that's a huge improvement. Am I going to watch it? No. If you guys did watch it, you guys can let me know. But if you're looking for something to watch this weekend that has some horror in it and you guys get off on that, well, yeah, you, you got something to look forward to. While speaking of movies, we got a Bad Boys 4 trailer, which is, I can't show you, but you got your boy Will Smith and Martin. Man, Bad boys bro bad boys one two and surprisingly enough bad boys three was really good i i love seeing martin on the big screen it's wild too because will smith he this man just hides his aging like crazy but this man definitely got older these guys are grandpas now <laughs> And they're still recording movies where they're out here kind of just doing like kung fu stuff. They're doing like non-young people stuff. It's it's funny. It's good humor. I'm going to watch it. It's it's for the culture. You don't not watch Bad Boys. It's it's one of the series that, in my opinion, the original Bad Boys is one that you have to watch. It is a hood classic. It's one that you can put on repeat. It's extremely funny. And Will Smith and Martin were definitely in their peaks when they made that movie. But yeah, Bad Boys 4 comes out out exclusively movie theaters in June 7th. That is in three months, so you got time to prepare. And in gaming, guys, we have a freaking huge, huge announcement, okay? Jeff Keighley told us, but they were telling us there's gonna be a new Marvel game that was gonna be announced today. They just announced it today. And it's essentially Overwatch, but with Marvel characters. Now, whenever I hear about it, like a, a, you know, a streaming service, live service like this that they're kind of come out with and it's done by Marvel, I'm always like kind of like, um, I don't know. You're just out here. You're just trying to make money. You're not going to put a lot of energy and effort into it. But I looked at this trailer just for the first 30 seconds. I had to stop and pause because I was like, wait a minute. It kind of looks pretty good. Jeff saying just announced Marvel Rivals is a new 6v6 team based PvP hero shooter from NetEase Games and Marvel Games for Steam and Epic Store free to play a beta is coming in may that's in a month essentially the alpha test will feature 12 heroes including black panther spider-man magneto and magic yo i, I could wakanda forever out here i can swing around with spider-man and this is a kind of like overwatch 6v6 you've got my attention got my attention marvel what you got show me what you got Team to win this one. Okay, who we got? Wait, pause. Who we got? Who we got? Who we got? Who's this? Uh, I don't. <laughs> I don't know any of these people. Is that Groot? Is that is that Groot? Other than that, I don't. Is that Groot and um the the raccoon? I think that's who they are. I don't know who these guys are. Pick your hero. Doctor Strange, Iron Man, Iron, Iron. Iron Man? Who is this dude with a gun? <laughs> Blood thinks he's a part of the team, bro. Yo, we got Black Panther, Spider-Man, dude that kind of looks like Iron Man. I don't know who he is. Iron Man, and then dude with a gun. <laughs> you guys know how Marvel works, though. This guy is probably the strongest out of all of them. Get ready. Okay, let me just pause again. Dude with a gun, Black Panther, Spidey, Doctor Strange, Iron Man, Iron Man, but not really Iron Man. We got Groot and the mole, and I don't know who that is. That looks like a Loki. Looks like a Loki. I don't know who that is. I do know who this is, but I can't remember off the top of my head. And yeah. Go! By the Vashanti, Strange is here. I'm oh, that's freaking Hulk? <laughs> oh, shit. That was better. Oh my god. Oh, okay. All right. My bad. I'm sorry. Sorry for the disrespect. I just said dude with a gun. I ain't never seen Banner with a gun. <laughs> I am so sorry, Hulk. Okay. Oh, that's Winston. That's Winston. <laughs> And I'm pausing because I think the music is copyrighted, so I gotta pause like every 50, 15 seconds or so. But that's Winston. He just did Winston's jumps, and 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 oh my lord, he's about to do what? Iron Fist? It's nano time. You got Iron Man out here, like like Tharja, Tharda, Tharda, whatever. I'm playing this a lot. That on video. I'm opening a portal. How Spidey move? Yo! I am Groot! Join together! Drown them! Oh my god. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. 
This has potential. If they put the resources, they have the resources. Marvel has all the resources. If they put the time and energy, this could be the Overwatch killer. This is it. Overwatch is already on the decline. Okay, they already screwed up Overwatch. They screwed up PVE too. But Overwatch is still great. If they make this big and strong and important and good enough and not just try to just this could be the new big thing because oh my lord this looks great i'm everywhere yoki with the warps oh, oh you can fake pretend i got you behold dark child who is that dark child is that what you said Bro, Gru is kind of like a turret? I gotta pause, I gotta pause. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. It looks good. Usually when I see something new, I'm like, eh, I don't know, y'all. What, what's, well, they're fooling me, they're fooling me. But this is absolutely looks so fun. Is this a W? Luna Snow. Magic. That's magic. The Wakanda. You're the winner. Looks good. Wait, is that is that a female Thanatos? Huh? I thought Thanatos was just this big, ugly-looking brute dude. Is that that looks like the same head? Who is that? I like her. Uh, what we got here? What we got here? We got Storm. We got uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Why well, I always forget his freaking name? You got the girl who can, who, you know, the girl who's also part of the Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't know who that is. I also don't know who that is. Two big dudes in the back. And I don't know who that is as well. But these are possible DLC characters coming out in the future. It looks freaking good, Rivals. Sign up now, closed alpha begins May. I'm signing up. Marvel, look, you better let me into this beta. I always try to sign up for the, the beta and I never get in. Get me the hell in there. While we're still talking about gaming, do you guys wanna talk about exaggerated body proportions when it comes to creating women in the gaming space? Because you guys asked me to talk about this really quick, where it said Microsoft urges developers not to create female characters with exaggerated body proportions. Oh, they wanna make them more realistic. From Microsoft, on their official site to support game dev, site is titled as Product Inclusion Action Help Customers Feel Seen. And they don't, <laughs> so for those you guys who don't know let me tell you a little bit of research okay the character that you see on the left is a character based off uh, the new game that's coming out called stellar blade all right she's a she she looks good think about like near automata but to the extreme the assets the graphics the graphics the, the mechanics are very very nice to look at and require a lot of research that girl that we see from stellar blade is actually created from a girl who exists in real life so she's just not like a, a she's literally created based on someone that exists already the picture here is kind of throwing shade to say that she is being made off an actual human being's uh, body proportions but there's some argument out there where microsoft is telling people to not make them look <laughs> Well, I guess they try to say that, hey, you need to look, you know, like not good. This article wrote this article that says Microsoft cautions developers to avoid curvy female characters. Avoid? Hello? Why? One Twitter user pointed out the language expressly condemning certain female characters as reinforcing negative gender stereotypes. Hello? Negative? What do you mean by negative? Are you reinforcing any negative gender stereotypes? Are you unnecessarily introducing gender and gender barriers into your code of design? Are you creating playable female characters that are equal in skill and ability to their male peers? Are your female characters equipped with clothing and armor that fits their tasks? Do they have exaggerated body proportions? When the story allows, do you show male characters who display a full 
full range of emotions, including joy, sadness, and vulnerability. Are they attacking toxic masculinity? Recently, Western gamers developers have been making a point to rally against objectification in games and are citing unrealistic beauty standards set by fictional characters. Most recently, Stellar Blade has been the subject of such criticism despite the game's heroine being based off a real-life model. Between Microsoft's developer site and Stellar Blade, it seems there's been a reversal of roles in recent years. Sony has been criticized for its censorship policies after relocating its gaming business units to California. And let's talk about this without it being like super woke or anything like that, okay? Because this is the, this is the anti-woke woke campaign that people start creating where, you know, like you see Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Velma is a, you know, a thick black woman who doesn't look like the, the classic back April O'Neil. And now it seems like this kind of diversity, the DEI, the inclusion, making people look like normal or giving women mustaches or more realistic proportions where their bodies don't. And, and it was like, people were like, yeah, bring some more people that look like just normal human beings. And then, you know, you got a game like Stellar Blade that's coming out and making, you know, taking a model, a girl who looks amazingly good and being like, yes, we want to make a story where the main character looks absolutely freaking gorgeous. I'm going to just say this, okay? One Piece. <laughs> Probably the most popular and most highly successful anime of all time right now at the current present moment. Okay, we're not going to compete it against Dragon Ball Z, but we can talk about Dragon Ball Z, okay? Have you seen Nami and Robin? I don't know if you guys have seen them anytime soon, but... <laughs> oh my god, episode 5. Nami, you know, little regular looking girl, you know, chilling, got a shirt on, you know, just, you know, and then episode 155, boom, has a bra on, got some cleavage, you know, but stupid, like the skinny, <laughs> and then it just continued to grow 380 and grow 550 and grow 900. It's, it, this one's got to be Photoshop. There's no way that her waist... <laughs> There's no way someone had to Photoshop this one. I believe this one is definitely Photoshop. There's no way. No, I call cap on that. But still, the the crazy jump on there, you know, she got some enlargements. There's no way those grew naturally, or I don't think. But anyway, yeah, this is one of the ones that people are talking about is they're trying to not create unrealistic expectations for women. And that, that conversation comes in when it comes like, stop putting, making women so like sexual or stop making them have these bodies that don't make any sense, right? And I understand that. I agree with that. I, I get what people are saying but like i feel like this is kind of like how it works when it comes to fiction when it comes to gaming when it comes to shows movies anime get the irony of kind of like making a, a woke jack okay to kind of talk about the situation but i honestly do feel like this personally okay like this one shows here this girl saying they're so unrealistic men can't expect us to look like them and they show nami and all of these girls right but then as a guy and you see like all of these dudes you see dio right oh my god you see jonathan joestar you see Baki, we guys, we will see these guys who are super bulky. It's impossible to look like these dudes, but when we see them, we're not like, oh man, the beauty standards. Like, no, <laughs> most of us as men, from what I've talked to, we see the unachievable and we're like, yeah, how do we do that anyway? <laughs> How can I try to attempt to look as wild as that? Whether that's getting the muscles or whatever. How do I how do I create that? Like it's impossible. And yet here we are trying to achieve the impossible. Saying, I gotta hit the gym right now to look like them. A lot of guys in the gym are currently in the gym right now because they saw a picture of Baki. They saw a picture of Toji from JJK. They saw some dude on anime that with unrealistic expectations of what their bodies look like, and they said, damn, that's crazy. All right, it's impossible to look like that, but I'm just going to try it. <laughs> it's like an inspiration thing. And I get why. Okay, I get the beauty expectations that are set on women. I understand how society as a whole sets unrealistic standards for women as a whole in general. I, I get what's been happening, seeing the Victoria's Secret thing and trying to kind of just normalize and create an inclusion and not create and breed women into feeling like that they have to look a certain way, that they have to wear makeup. Because that's, that's how it works, at least in America, but most of society is that women are basically groomed from a very young age to be looking like a certain presentable way that their male counterpart will like. And it's not the other way around. I think there's two sides of the story here and I can get why people want more inclusion in gaming to make women look more normal, right? But I feel like we can have both. I think at the end of the day is that whether you make somebody look more normal or whether you make someone look more sexual, whatever, okay, the game just needs to be good, period. That's it. I don't care what the character looks like. If you make a good game, 
I don't care if the person looks like Nami and has like no waist and big boobies. If it's a 10 out of 10 game, then make them however you want. And you can make that character look ugly. You can have the ugliest looking thing out there. Just boom. Just just this nasty looking thing. Like, ooh. The, or the most normal of normal person. Just straight up out the gates. Tea sticking. Whatever. Looks like a regular person. Looks like the average person you see. I personally do not care if you make a brilliant game then make your character or story or movie look however you like in my opinion i know it goes a little bit deeper in that and when it comes to inclusion and diversity i get it but for me it's just is it good right because it's not defined by how you make these characters how they look doesn't define if it's a good film or if it's a good show i've seen lots of shows with what people consider terrible animation people believe like one piece is terrible animation and they just can't watch it because they can't get past the animation you know i've seen so many barriers to entry that people will say about these appearances of it but it's still absolutely goaded so that's me personally that's how i feel if it's good i will play and or watch it if it's bad then i won't that's it if you make these unrealistic characters and you make a bad game then it's just fan service and i'm just, I'm just not going to get involved but if it's good it's goaded then i will give you my money that's how i feel you guys can let me know how you feel before i end today's video i got some comments back about monday and wednesday's video where we're talking about the stories that involved George not found and Katie and the situation with the cop from Megan Hall and and people felt like I was wrong on both sides of these stories like there was an actual right answer <laughs> And people felt like I didn't kind of look past uh, some of the barriers, which I agree with. I think I had a blind spot for both. I Let me just basically, I'm not going to say that I don't believe what I believe, but I do think it's important for me to report things in a way that is fair. And when it comes to fairness, the entire concept when it comes to the George Not Found versus the Katie situation, I kind of summarize it into one thing. Did George Not Found touch her inappropriately? Yes or no? Now, a lot of people are trying to say, but there's a lot of different extremities. She looks like she's lying. It looks like she's changing the story. It looks like she's doing this. It looks like she's manipulating. And I'm not discounting any of that. I'm not saying that that's not something that could potentially be happening. It's just something that I don't know and I can't figure out and I don't have the answer to. So I'm not going to try to come to a conclusion to. But yes, it is something that could exist. There are false accusations all the time. And if it does end up being false, if George Not Found says she is lying when it comes to me touching her chest, then I will tell you guys that. For reference, and I say this every single time when we talk about the story is that yes, she could be lying. Yes, she could be doing this for cloud. Yes, she could be trying to do this to, to raise her own fame. She could be, but is she? I don't know, but we do know these things do happen. So it's important to stay vigilant. But since I can't come to any kind of conclusions on that, I can't figure out what she's actually doing it for. I don't think it's my space to be parasocial enough to figure out what her agenda and objective is. But we do know that her story has changed from time to time when it comes to other details. Details. But when it comes to kind of touching and all that stuff, that seems like it's been in the same place. If George Not Found says, hey, I didn't touch her boobs, then you guys at home can come to your own conclusion. It becomes a he say, she say. Do you think he did it or not? And lastly, when it comes to the whole concept of SA, like I will continue and stick by this, okay? <laughs> I don't care if you're cuddling on a freaking couch with somebody in over an hour, okay? Then you're just sitting there, you guys are getting smooth and everything's going along, whatever, okay? Whenever it comes to touching somebody in a way where you go to that next level specifically their private parts okay just because you're touching on someone's belly for an hour doesn't mean now you have the full cost to go and grab some breasts or some boobies right that that's not how it freaking works i feel like some people are like hey man you don't understand bro they were comfortable she was into it is that's just ask it's very simple <laughs> before you touch anybody's private parts just ask for permission don't assume that's it that's all i'm communicating if you still want to argue that point that somehow you can just silently do these things you are part of the problem period Okay, you cannot quietly, silently assume without any kind of trigger that says yes verbally to cross specific words and roads. And I will stick with that forever and ever. Okay, because if you want to start saying like, hey, you can do things without that specific communication because it's being implied in other ways, that's how you catch a freaking case, you goddamn idiot. But yes, my job here is not to villainize Katie. My job here is not also to villainize George Not Found. And I talk about this situation objectively. I'm not sitting here calling George Not Found a terrible freaking person i'm just literally speaking to the facts objectively did he do the biggest claim that she's saying and if he did do it and he's admitting to it there you go have at it and if he didn't now you got two sides of the story and you can believe whoever the hell you want and then it comes to megan the other story 
I think that one was something that I needed to be a little bit careful with, a little bit different with. The Megan story had to do with the cop who basically uh, settled for $500,000 with the city of New York because uh, she got coerced groomed by a uh, superior officer and to having sex with her. And apparently, according to the court documents, it was something where he was basically coerced and sexually assaulted over and over and over again. According to the documents that we've seen, that's what he did. And then eventually she gave in. And I gave an opinion where I was like, I feel like you don't just give in. Like that's, I said that I feel like a person should have the agency to just not do said thing. It's not a attempt to, to victim blame. That wasn't it. But I do understand the pressure. And I don't think I took that in consideration. Number one, this is superior. Number two, your young person in the law force and somebody out there is who has a lot of power over you is telling you to do something that you don't want to do. Number three, it has to do with your career. So if you don't do it, then it might affect your career for the rest of your life. There's a lot of basically power dynamics here at play. And then you again, we were talking about can't go to the police because these are the actual police who are doing these things to you. And that creates a situation where if you still look at her as a person who got involved with it willingly without realizing the power dynamic, then it creates a victim blaming scenario. And I don't think I looked at that hard enough and I apologize for that. All, all my takes will be 100%, which is why I appreciate you guys coming in here and talking to me and give me a little bit more like, you know, sides of the story that I might have seen some of the blind spots as well. I, I think I've become so, what's the word, jaded that I look at a situation like that and I think to myself, eh, yeah, these people are all bad. <laughs> this is a situation where everybody kind of knew what they were doing and they kind of got right up. That's how I view majority of the world. But I do want to give room and opportunity for people who are potential victims because I don't want to be wrong. And I don't want to come to the wrong conclusion. Even if my opinion is something is could be bad, I need to give people the ability to not be evil people. <laughs> and that's a, a weakness that I need to work with is, is not seeing the evil and bad and people all of the time. I think that's kind of what I got to work with. So I appreciate you guys bringing that to my attention. The girl, Megan, she could have probably might have been a victim in this situation. And again, I apologize if I came off as victim blaming. That's never what I intend to do. You guys know how I do here. I like to give people all equal opportunities and stay objective. But yes, that's it. Just wanted to address those two things. Not something I'm going to be doing normally. Okay. Usually I stand on business when I come to my opinions and stuff as well. But if you guys, enough people feed me enough information, I might, you know, go back and give more coverage of it. I always, if I make any mistakes to always go back, I'm okay with saying, sorry, I'm okay with saying that I'm wrong. And that is one of those situations that are happening right now. But all right, guys, that's all I have for today's video. I don't have a video for you guys lined up for a Friday because I'm going to be out of town. I'll be in Atlanta for this YouTube event, this event where a bunch of YouTubers are coming together and doing a little bit of collaborations and stuff. And I'm going to go there and hang out and see what I can get involved with. I'm going to touch some grass for a little bit. So hopefully I'll let you guys know on the trip. You can keep me posted on Twitter or on Instagram. Let me know if there's any places or things I should do while I'm out there in Atlanta. I'll only be there from like Thursday, coming back Sunday, and then I'll have a video for you guys ready on Monday. So I love you guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. And I'll catch you guys later. You guys take it easy. Peace.